Hello everyone and welcome to another weekly news roundup. Today, we will be going over a bunch of changes, including our new state of PvP section, which will cover how PvP is in the current time. Before we get onto that though, let's take a recap of the beta build, noting the most important changes. As we know, there's been a ton of changes ongoing. So if you wanna check them all out, be sure to check out Wowhead for all the beta build changes. Demon Hunters have received further nerfs, reducing the pressure of Glaive Tempest, as well as reworking Unbound Chaos, resulting in an overall nerf. As discussed last week, heading into Shadowlands as a Demon Hunter is looking more dire as we get closer to the expansion's release. Unbound Chaos in particular was a big reason why DHs started to perform better in PvP, giving them crazy burst damage. This damage helped Demon Hunters have much more burst pressure able to force cooldowns with more ease. The rework will buff your fell rush damage, but it's still definitely an overall loss. Nerfing DH's damage without compensation of gaining damage elsewhere will make the class struggle to compete with the other top tier melee classes. Without this compensation of buffs in some form, then Demon Hunters will most likely stay at the bottom of the food chain of attractable melee classes to play with. Although DHs may be disappointed in general, fear not as there may be some life in the Shadowlands for you still, as I believe even if DHs aren't strong standalone classes, they could still do well depending on composition strength. In 2v2, they obviously will take a hit, as 2v2 is usually built from the best classes in the game as its meta. In 3v3 though, we could see some comps that can work out for them, as it's common to see some classes being weak but made viable with a certain comp. This composition would most likely be Warrior DH or Windwalker DH, as both of these melee are very powerful and can help protect the Demon Hunter from dying. As for MM Hunters, they are going to be delighted with their one recent change, buffing their True Shot ability. Having increased focused regeneration will allow them to pack more of a punch during this CD. Even though this is only one change, it's quite a big one as Hunters rely on these CDs, being one of the most aggressive classes in the game. Having your offensive cooldown deal more pressure will make it easier to force defensive cooldowns, or make the enemy team have to play more defensively in general to survive the pressure of True Shot. That being said, usually with ranged offensive CDs that require a cast time, this will usually be prone to line of sight, which could be frustrating against aware players. Netting big defensive CDs or landing kills from using True Shot will be made easier though, and this is probably the best usage for the spell. Frost Mages also have a few changes, having their Slick Ice slightly buffed. However, their Ice Bite Conduit has been significantly nerfed. This change was needed as their Ice Lance damage during Frozen Orb was incredibly powerful which could also lack counterplay from enemies to be able to deal with this. However, nerfing the conduit by this much may make it too underwhelming, resulting in the use of other more powerful potency conduits like Unrelenting Cold. The legendary isn't that great in PvP. Not only should you be shut down during your icy veins, but it remains a lackluster legendary in comparison to Triune Ward, expanded potential, or even freezing winds. So overall, mages will feel the nerf of this one as their ice lance damage was very dominant during arena matches. Now, enhancement shamans will be feeling the pain. As predicted, sadly, Doom Winds was nerfed severely, making it pack one quarter of the punch less than before. Seeing as this legendary item was making enhancement shamans deal crazy burst damage, the nerf was inevitable and understandable. However, they have also nerfed Wind Fury Weapon, dealing much less damage as well. This is quite an odd nerf, as now they have double dipped on the passive and burst damage an enhancement shaman can dish out. Seeing as enhancement shamans were already very low on our tier list without any subsequent buffs or changes to the spec, we will most likely see them performing as the worst melee spec in the game. All right, moving on to another important matter for the near future is the Shadowlands PvP gear you obtain from Battlegrounds. Stoops does an excellent job covering this. Honor gear that's created requires an absurd amount of Battlegrounds farming in order to get the 197 item level gear pieces. In comparison to Mythic Plus gearing, Honor gear farming is going to be much, much more time consuming as well as less rewarding. Mythic Plus gear can achieve getting that gear instantly at the end of a Mythic 6 dungeon run, which will be easy for most active players to achieve. As you can see, you will also gain increased eye level upgrades if you improve on that Mythic Plus difficulty making it a far superior way of farming your best gear possible as quickly as you can. And not that it wasn't already difficult enough to gear solely from Battlegrounds, they found a way to make it more difficult by time gating. Basically, it will take Renown levels to upgrade certain eye level honor pieces. This makes it unquestionably the worst way to gear a character at the start of the expansion. This is a hot discussion, as in MOP, WAD, then Legion, PvE gear wasn't needed at all in order to play PvP. 
Ever since BFA, this has changed, with Blizzard going backwards on this, forcing PvP players to PvE in order to have good enough gear required to do high-rated arenas or rated BGs. As such, usually at the start of every major patch with an increased eye level of gearing, players typically spam high-level Mythic Plus dungeons in order to get the best gear possible in an efficient way. Well, this trend will continue seeing as Mythic Plus gear is more valuable and will still be easier to obtain. As a PvP player, I personally feel quite neglected that doing PvP isn't going to help me gear for PvP. Mythic Plus farming won't be an issue for myself, but for other players, it can feel quite tedious to have to farm PvE gear in order to PvP. My question to you guys is, do you like doing PvE content to gear for PvP? If not, what alternative would you have to eliminate this? Feel free to leave your comments about this down below. And while we're on the topic of gearing in Shadowlands, Blizzard have recently added many bind on equip epics in the Shadowlands build. There's quite a number of pieces for most classes to use, having a variety of stats which could make certain specs worth investigating it. The Haste Versatility Amulet looks like it will be a favored piece for most specs, considering these stats are the best for most of them, as well as being a versatility heavy item. The Punishing Loop and the Stormforged Signet are also very intriguing. Both have just one stat, which could mean specs that favor either crit or mastery will definitely have an eye out for these. Interestingly, the most attractive piece from the BOE gear comes in the form of a unique trinket called Relic of the First Ones. It reduces the cooldown of your Covenant ability by 20% all the time. If the PvP trinket set bonus isn't powerful enough, then this trinket could see the light of day for players with high impact Covenant abilities. However, considering the new buff to the PvP trinket set bonus last week, this may not be the case as we head on into Shadowlands. Now, let's discuss the state of PvP. This section will specifically talk about real-time PvP events, which in this case will be focused on pre-patch non-rated arenas. The pre-patch has been out for some time now, giving players a chance to figure out the best classes and compositions in arena. As such, certain specs and comps have had more of an impact than what was expected. So, here we will talk about the main things the pre-patch has brought with some of the specs. As predicted, Demon Hunters have definitely fallen from being one of the best twos classes to being a fairly decent one. Although they are not a top tier melee in the 2v2 bracket, they can still perform well when paired with a strong healer. Their main strength still comes from the Unbound Chaos Burst paired with a Drestigath Trinket, which can easily take down someone rapidly. Burst damage is incredibly high in the pre-patch, so it's no surprise that this combination is working well. However, with the loss of Blades Dance Dodge, they have become much more susceptible to melee pressure. With the burst damage other melees have, you may find yourself struggling to survive as a DH from time to time, compared to previous seasons where you were virtually invincible. If you're an arms warrior, then you'll be loving this patch, going from one of the weaker classes to being a top tier class in the pre-patch. While this was predictable, with the incredible addition of a powerful toolkit, one thing that wasn't predicted was the power of crushing assault. These traits in the pre-patch are incredibly overpowered, allowing you to easily global your enemies, dealing absurd damage with normal hits, and if it crits, well, you could easily take more than half your opponent's HP if you have other CDs running. Of course, Crushing Assault shouldn't be doing as much damage as it is right now, being able to chunk half or more of your opponent's health just because you got a random proc of absurd damage. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice guilty pleasure to have dealing incredibly powerful burst damage, which can win you early games could feel like fun, especially after a season of less fun. It also feels underwhelming knowing that you won due to a slam proc rather than outplaying your opponent. More important, keep in mind the other side of that coin, which is playing into warriors. At any moment, the enemy warrior could get a crushing assault proc, which can easily force their biggest defensive CDs or outright kill them. This obviously just isn't fair, plain and simple. The toolkit and random unhealable pressure from arms is making it very powerful right now, able to slay in the 2v2 bracket once again. I'm glad to see most of the toolkit come into action for arms warriors in the pre-patch as it's making arms a much more enjoyable spec to play. Elemental shamans are another spec that's risen from being fairly average to being a top tier spec. Their passive and burst damage is difficult for any healer to deal with. Added with their passive tankiness and shaman utility, they have become top tier. The main reason for this is due to Lava Burst hitting much harder now. This is probably due to both Azerite traits and the fact that crit damage has increased in PvP scenarios. It also means they don't have to rely on Lasso and Earthshocks to net them kills. 
This makes their way of landing kills or gaining pressure unpredictable, which can easily lead to forcing defensive CDs from panic. Then, later you can finish them off with the same damage or simply using your offensive CDs. Speaking of which, Stormkeeper is dealing even higher burst damage during the pre-patch as well, which will usually always lead to forcing big defensive CDs or landing kills as well. Due to all these reasons, there's no surprise why Elemental Shamans are doing very well in the pre-patch. Moving on to Paladins, this is probably the best class in the game at the moment when it comes to 2v2 performance, seeing all three specs being viable at high ratings. One of the biggest reasons for Ret and Prop Paladins being potent is due to Word of Glory. It deals an absurd amount of burst healing that can easily keep any friendly target afloat, especially for Prop Paladins who are nearly impossible to kill at the moment. Holy Paladins and Prop Paladins also do quite a bit of damage, making it difficult to deal with when paired with a heavy hitter DPS spec. As for Rep Paladins, well, their damage is even more significant, being able to deal immense damage with Execution Sentence and Avenging Wrath. If the enemy doesn't react or have appropriate defensive CDs, you can easily wipe them out, instantly slaying them all. The main disadvantage of Rep Paladin versus Prop Paladin, though, is that the Rep Paladin is an easier target to kill making Prop Paladin much more noob-friendly in that regard. Beyond that, Holy Paladins do struggle to heal outside of their CDs. Without the corruption, inevitable truth, there will be times where the Holy Paladin won't be able to keep you up through the high damage of the pre-patch. Surprisingly though, Prop Paladins are actually even stronger healers in this regard. Their healing throughput with Word of Glory is nothing short of ridiculous, and with their added utility of defensive CDs and offensive gameplay, there's no surprise that they are performing at a high level right now. This results in quite a few mixed feelings. Some players will be happy that Paladins can play any spec they want in twos and do well with them. However, most players are frustrated when dealing with immense hybrid off-healing, most commonly with Prop Paladins. Moving on to Priests, the difference in Shadow Priests from last season to pre-patch is truly night and day. Shadow Priests have gone from one of the weakest classes to being one of the strongest. Their ability to create solo pressure through their CC and burst damage can make them carry arena games by themselves. They also have a strong amount of off-healing now through their Shadow Mend and Power Word Shield. This makes themselves and their partners much more durable and difficult to kill. The power of this is so immense that we're starting to see high-rated double DPS Shadow Priest compositions. They can be paired with a Mage, Ret, or Prop Paladin, as well as a sub rogue, which is probably the best double DPS comp Shadow Priests can play. It's nice to see Shadow performing at a high level once again, although it does ask the question if they are too powerful when heading into Shadowlands. For Discipline Priests, once again, they are performing exceptionally well. They still have a ton of damage they can dish out, making them one of the best healers in 2v2. Having access to Thought Steal as well, being one of the most powerful PvP talents added to the game, priests can start having a lot of power and fun playing around with this talent. With their continued pressure, utility, usage of mind control, and multiple defensive CDs, it is no surprise that they are performing extremely well in the pre-patch. In Season 4 of BFA, Disc Priests heavily relied on classes that could essentially babysit them in order to survive. Now they can definitely take care of themselves, and can make most DPS classes work well alongside them. One spec that won't be happy with the pre-patch though is definitely Holy Priests. Being severely carried by the Haste Corruption was one of the biggest reasons Holy saw a rise in the 2v2 bracket. With that gone, as well as the damage being very high, it's impossible for Holy Priests to deal with the healing throughput as well as dishing out damage on their own. As such, there has been a rapid decline of Holy Priests, which is sad news for our Holy Priest fans. Although being able to simply go to Disc Priest and become a Tier 1 healer is an excellent option to have. Another spec that will be thoroughly enjoying the pre-patch are Feral Druids. As stated, burst damage is king. So, in that sense, it's no surprise seeing Feral Druids climb up to the top at least in 2v2. With access to Reaping Flames, Ferocious Bite, and PvE Trinkets, you can easily demolish targets in the blink of an eye. They are still quite elusive targets and have quite a bit of off-healing as well, allowing them to prolong games until they can burst someone down again. However, they still do need some extra assistance in order to achieve powerful pressure, which is why they are still seen mainly favored with Holy Paladins or Disciplined Priests. As for rogues, well, you'll be looking to drop your assassination spec, respecking into subtlety. Sub rogues are extremely powerful right now, taking advantage of the burst damage, packing a serious punch, as well as having incredible CC to lock down the enemy team. 
This allows for easier offensive setups as well as surviving better throughout an arena game. As such, they are not only doing well with healers, but with many other DPS classes. These include Shadow Priests, Mages, Rep Paladins, and even Hunters. The damage aspect is more powerful than expected in the pre-patch, being able to pretty much solo any target down without too much assistance, making them a scary spec to face. However, they are still very cooldown oriented, so if you have the means to stop them in their path, then you can survive them with more ease. Overall though, I think most rogues may be happy going into sub instead of assassination due to having more interactive gameplay in arena matches. Outside of those certain classes and big meta deviation in the arenas, not too much else has changed apart from two major things. As hinted on a bit earlier, double DPS comps are making a comeback in the pre-patch. Albeit, this is mainly due to sub rogue, shadow priests, and rep paladin compositions, but that's still far more double DPS comps to see than we've had in a long time. Notice I didn't count prop paladins in this discussion. Well, let's face it, that's because this abomination of a spec is pretty much a healer. Fair enough if you enjoy playing prop paladins and want to succeed with it. It's nice that you have another variation of a spec, but it is pretty much a healer rather than a double DPS variant. Beyond that, as we know, most essences, azurite traits, and trinkets have been slightly buffed in the pre-patch in terms of just doing more damage in general. However, for some reason, the Crucible of Flame Minor Ancient Flame is doing an absurd amount of damage, making this essence a staple minor choice for every class. So in this week's State of PvP section, all of this has boiled down to my question for all of you. Have you been enjoying pre-patch arenas? Let us know if so and why in the comments down below. Last but not least, we have again more classic PTR testing. That's right, it's more Nax Ramus testing, but being the last two bosses of this nostalgic raid, being Zephyron and Kel'Thuzad. These tests are being done, like many things in PTR, to see if there's any issues or bugs with these encounters. Both of these fights are highly anticipated, especially Kel'Thuzad being the endgame boss on the classic servers. As we know, this raid will be coming out very soon, coming close behind the release of the Shadowlands expansion. Anyway, that covers this week's news roundup. We hope you all enjoyed this video and feel free to ask any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.